Guys, thanks again for being on the show. It's a true pleasure to have you. And congratulations on all the success. I mean, a lot of exciting things are happening. Thank you very much. Thanks, Charles. When was the last time we did an interview? I can't remember exactly what year it was. Probably about a year and a half ago, I'm guessing. Two years. I actually, uh, I just watched the rec- that, that interview because I wanted to make sure I didn't do a repeat of any of the same records. And it was uh, right before we went to Europe in 2018 or 2017, something like that. So two years ago, there you go. Yeah. It's two years already, that's incredible. I, it's amazing. And I was like, I mean, I follow you guys, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. And I, it's, it's amazing how many shows you sold out. First of all, I'm not trying to, it, it's quite impressive to, uh, he must be really, I mean, you're going to do the tour eventually, but you must be really excited about that. Oh, definitely. We're, we're very, very excited. It was kind of a roller coaster because, you know, it was like, we put out the tour, the tour sold really well. There was all these shows selling out. We were like, oh my God. And then coronavirus hit and we were like, no, it just like <laughs> happened really quick. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, we'll be able to go on this tour later. And that is very exciting. Like, you know, we won't miss out, but we were just excited to go in April. So we're definitely feeling antsy to get it on the road right now. Sure, understandable. Tell us about your new album. The show's about albums, but we want to talk about your album. Of course, it's dropping this Friday and... Uh... You got you worked on with some pretty cool people on it. Tell us tell us all about it. Uh, yeah, we uh, worked with this producer John Congleton, and uh, when we uh, signed with our record label, they kind of gave us a list of people that we could look into for producing the record. We really liked John because he kind of looked like Neil's dad and kind of like had a similar <laughs> energy. Not um, <laughs> it's great. And then he ended up kind of being like Neil's dad. He was like very <laughs> funny and like really kind of whipped us into shape. Like it's, it was so cool working with someone who, and, and this was legitimately good for us, like had no regard for our emotions, but was just like, no, this is what's good. This is what's not. And we would have to like stand up for our argument points, but it was so nice having someone in the room to control it rather than us just bickering amongst each other. And yeah, it was a good I mean, let me, I can give you an example of what it was like working with John. So it was stressful. We were trying to write all these new songs for this record. It was, you know, it was, it was pretty hard. And I was spending a lot of time at home writing. And John would text me every day. He'd be like, <laughs> he would re- demand that I sent him recordings of the songs before he came. He'd say, you have to have three new songs done before this week, but I'm not getting on a plane to come to Vancouver. And he'd text me every day. He'd be like, buddy, clock's ticking. Finish up those <laughs> songs. And I'm just like, John, back off it. I'm trying to write here. <laughs> that's fantastic that sounds like the uh i don't know if you guys know the minute the minute men they used to go into the studio for like 26 hours and bang out you know what i mean they were just forced right away gun gun to the head and just just bang it out yeah we weren't doing any any cocaine while recording this album so we didn't have that option <laughs> i know you guys are you're abstaining you're you're fine young lads oh yeah no we're good boys no pills no powders that's what mom always says <laughs> What what what's your favorite track off the off the new record? Chris, what's yours? Uh, man, it always changes, but um, right now uh, there's a song called Thursday on the record that I really like. It's uh, yeah, I don't know, it just doesn't sound like anything we've written before. So that one, yeah, I like, I've gotten really into. I like that song a lot. I also really like uh, we've got a song called Brian's Movie, which uh, is kind of a it's got a stupid title because. Um, <laughs> Originally, it, I wrote it, it was just the working title was Brian's Song. And uh, and then we realized there was a movie called Brian's Song, so we decided to call the song Brian's Movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a sleeper for sure. Um, let's, let's talk a bit about, I'm just looking here at my notes because he's produced so much stuff, John Congleton. Uh, what album, give, give us a favorite album I am. I mean, he's worked with Always, Angel, just to name a few, Always, Angel Olsen, Best Coast, B.B. Bridgers, Swan, St. Vincent. I mean, The War on Drugs, so many amazing. And it goes back even years and years and years. What What's a favorite album of his that you know, that drew you to him? Uh, he did this record with a band that we really love called The Districts. Um, sure. And I think the album's called The Floors and a Spoil, but... Yeah, we really, I, like when we started Peach Pit, we drove down to Seattle to go see those guys at a venue called uh, Numos. And like, just we're kind of like, this is what, you know, we want to try to look like. Let's be a rock band. This is cool. So that being a record that was so influential for us and then getting to talk to him about them making that record was super exciting. Fantastic. 
Once again, as you know, this show is about you and the albums that have influenced Peach Pit. So let's, uh, if it's cool, let's keep on talking about albums. Yeah, absolutely. So, so give us the skinny on a young band that we should be looking out for. Maybe, maybe for your hometown of Vancouver. I'll give you guys, the, I'll give you the skinny. I know the best, the best band in Vancouver right now is uh, this band called Babe Corner. Uh, they're an all-girl rock band. Have you heard of them? Well, now we have. Now you yeah, have. They're, they're the best. They just put out uh, a new uh, EP like a, a month ago. The songs are, are super awesome. And uh, it's fronted by Chris's girlfriend, Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not just plugging her because it's Chris's girlfriend, but they, they're an awesome, awesome band. That's fantastic. You guys really support each other. That's so that's yeah, definitely in this day and age. Um, another really good hot young band that's about to drop a really sick album is a band called Sunseeker out of Nashville. Um, they are friends of ours. We went on tour with them last year, but yeah, they have sent us their album uh, before it's out, and I don't think they have a release date yet. But I'm so excited for those songs to drop. Yeah, it's so definitely their, their best release yet. It's amazing. The songs are so so good. So I'm excited for that. Mm -hmm. So let's. It's a very joyful conversation. Don't get me wrong with all that's going on in the world, but let's let's talk about some more fun stuff. What's uh, I know in a couple of a couple of your videos, I've seen you guys dancing. What what's what's a track that never fails to get you out on the uh, if you're at a wedding or a bar mitzvah? What 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 what's the song that will get you out onto the dance floor? Oh, well, there was just we just were at a wedding actually. Uh, Chris yeah. and I were at a wedding literally like two days before the quarantine started. My sister got married, and so Chris and I were on the dance floor. What were we dancing hardest to? I don't know. I uh, the Bohemian DJ was Rhapsody? killing it though. Bohemian Rhapsody was a good one. There's there's this song by Doctor Hook, the the band that did "I Want to Be on the Cover of the Rolling Stone," but it's called "Share in the Night Together," and it it's not like an upbeat banger, but it's just like the sexiest song I've ever heard. So just like slithering across the dance floor to that song, definitely uh, definitely one of the favorites for sure. And a, a new song that's getting me pumped is uh, this uh, new Braid single called "Young Buck." Um, don't know if you've seen the music video, but there is some incredibly uh, weird and sexy dance moves in it, and so that's kind of my favorite dance jam right now. And what's a good record um, as we look back on this as the COVD, not to days? What's a good album to cheer, sorry, to cheer everybody up to get people, you know, happy? Spread it. Well, I, I I have a good one, and. Uh, I, I've never really talked about this band before in any interviews, but they're honestly very, very influential for me. I listened to them a ton when I was growing up. My dad and mom were huge fans, but uh, the Bare Naked Ladies first album, Borden, is such a good record. The, like the first five songs on it are like, Hello City, Enid, Grade Nine, Be My Yoko Ono, and they're all just like so good, and Brian Wilson, and like they're kind of funny, but sad, and like, uh, I w never really thought about it before, but definitely kind of influenced, I don't know, what I kind of want to write about, actually. They were they were great pop songs. And another Canadian, thanks for all the Canadian content. We rarely get to uh, so many great Canadian bands. Were, were Dr. Hook Canadian, too? I don't know if Dr. Hook were Canadian, actually. But yeah, we, we've talked about this so many times. Like, the ratio of musicians that come out of Canada compared to its population size compared with the U.S., there's so much talent coming out of Canada. It's just a way smaller country. So, you know, there's still more American musicians. Yeah, you play, I guess it's, you know, you play hockey or you make music in, in, in the wintertime, right? What do you do? One of the two. Yeah, totally. You got to be holed up in your place. You got to figure out something to do. What's the next record that you're, do you like to buy? That's not in your, obviously it's, it's eluded your collection. That's eluded my collection. Ugh. I, you know what, me and Neil have both been listening uh, to this record and talking about it a lot lately, but Revolver by the Beatles. Um, <laughs> we've, we've become such Beatles nuts in the last like year. I think it started with us watching this George Harrison documentary that Martin Scorsese put out. It was such a good movie and like one of those movies that really kind of makes you feel like, I mean, this sounds cheesy, but like, you know, you feel changed after watching it. And ever since then, we've been diving into all these different records, but currently that's the one that I'm revisiting and getting really into, and I would love to own that on vinyl. Yeah, I think all, all of us really were obviously Beatles fans growing up, because everybody is who likes music, but you know, 
now since whatever year and a half I've really been like every couple months diving into an, a Beatles record that I hadn't fully gotten into before and yeah Revolver's definitely number one right now okay we're gonna, we're gonna do another fun section which we ask we ask all guests cup of coffee or glass of wine you'd like to have a, a meeting with with any living or dead artist oh okay um hmm i've been saying this one quite a bit lately uh just because we've been doing some interview other interviews but bernard purdy uh he's a drummer that drummed on some beatles records apparently um and he drummed on like what else did he do he did um uh steely dan and stuff i think yeah i I think he might have mikey would be able to tell us better but uh he like lately when i've just been sitting down to eat a meal in front of the tv or something i throw up a youtube video of bernard purdy like playing and narrating his drumming and he's just like he's such an old man now but he's got such style and like such groove and him talking while playing is one of the most entertaining things to watch so just sitting down with that guy and talking to him about music and all the bands he's played with definitely uh definitely would be my cup of coffee that i'd choose i think i would go with uh, a cup of coffee with uh, paul mccartney definitely i just like obviously it's paul mccartney he's in the beatles but also as far as celebrities go, he kind of seems like the nicest person ever. So it would be like not too scary because I know he would just probably be like kind and gracious. To 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 listen or to write music, what what is your preference? Weed, wine, or water? <laughs> Definitely weed. weed for sure. Oh, all, all the way. Hundred percent. There's no yeah. there's no drug that makes music sound better than marijuana. Mm, except for maybe, well, <laughs> yeah. Maybe like, ac- <laughs> maybe like acid. <laughs> we actually, we were just talking about that song, Quaaludes. Brian's wow. movie earlier. And yeah. we wrote that while we were on like a cabin retreat uh, away to do some songwriting and mm-hmm. ended up doing a bunch of acid and writing that song. But wow. like, while, while doing that, we were like, oh, this is why the Grateful Dead <laughs> were who they were, because this is yeah. so fun. And I mean, you know, everything in moderation, but that was... Uh, definitely a moment of like okay this is uh definitely enhancing my experience right now yeah that was you know i you're you're probably too young to have gone to uh unless you went as a really really young lad unless your parents were kind of like hippies and took you to a show but yeah that was pretty much just millions of glass not millions sorry thousands of glassy eyes watching oh yeah man play like uh these like 20 minute jams they're just like and if you go oh, there yeah. great you're kind of like eh, you know okay yeah. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. So what what is what's the record for your generation? What would you what would you consider like going to school which kind of had the most impact on you? Like socially, musically? Hmm. I would say um for me, just like if I had to pick something, I would pick uh Mac DeMarco's second album too, probably. Um, you know, I don't know that his music I don't, I don't know that you can hear any of his influence in our music specifically but uh just his personality i've n- I'd never seen a performer who really was totally like so themselves all the time you know it didn't seem like he was ever putting on any kind of a front and that was something that very much inspired me especially when we first started this band i was like oh my god i want to be like that guy like that guy's having fun and he's being himself fantastic guys thank you so much for being on the show we like to ask all our guests for some words of wisdom a message of love a message of hope any anything you can give us hmm well yeah Chris, you're pretty wise yeah i'm pretty <laughs> wise uh yeah i don't know one thing i mean just to continue on that mac demarco tangent i think one thing i've been realizing over the past few years is just like not to take any of this too seriously, especially like with the position that we're in. I think this is good advice for any musician, whatever um, level you're at. It's just not to tie your identity to what you're doing too much, whether it's going well or not going well, because if it's going well and you're tying your identity to it, you're not going to end up in a good place. And if it's not going well and you're tying your identity to it, same thing. So just not taking yourself too seriously in this industry and what you're pursuing and and just remembering like the the music element of it and that being the reason you're in it not because you feel a sense of like attachment or identity to your stuff and i think mac demarco exemplifies that with just being like hey i'm here having fun and literally nothing else and i think that's the healthiest attitude you can take 
Fantastic. Guys, thanks again. Best of luck with everything. Hope to see you around. Uh, geez, I was going to say hope to see you, uh, you know, soon in, uh, at a show. At a show, but I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> well, you know what? That's, we have uh, we, we have a show uh, in July in Vancouver at the Commodore that we're hoping we won't have to uh, cancel or postpone. Um, so maybe we'll see you there. If anything, July would be great. We'll definitely be there if it's happening. We're there. Thanks right again and, and great talking to you guys. You too, Charles. Okay, bye. Thanks, Charles. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. Thanks. Hi, I'm Mark Henning, the other half of Records in My Life. Love it that you made it to the end of the video. Please leave us a comment, leave us a thumbs up, and subscribe. If you really dug the show, we'd love it if you'd consider supporting us over at patreon.com forward slash R-I-M-L-T-V. Cheers and see you next week.